the ugly duckling the summer to the country was particularly beautiful and it was glorious to be out in the green fields and meadows it was so amusing to see the white stork parading around on the long red legs and to hear him talking Egyptian a language he had learned from his mother in the mites of the sunny meadow stood an old farmhouse it was surrounded by a deep canal and from the walls down to the water grew burdock sharps so tall that children could stand under them it was so nice and shady there that the mother dog decided it would be a good place to sit on her nest and hatch out her young ones at least at last one of the eggs crack open and then another and another until egg new little yellow ducklings poke out their heads and cried peep peep how big the world is exclaimed the duckling they were glad to be out of those tight little eggs and their mother was glad to let them look around at the leaves for she knew how good for the eyes the color green is but this isn't the whole world by any means she told the ducklings there is much more of it it extends far beyond the other side of the garden maybe we can all go there sometime let me see now are we all here she looked around and saw the one of her eggs she looked around and saw the one of her eggs the largest had not yet hatched oh dear she said to herself i'm so tired of sitting on eggs i wonder how much longer this is going to last but she sat down on the nest again and wait some more at last the big egg cracked and broke open out came two big feet and a head but it, it wasn't a soft little downy yellow head like the older ducklings this one was big and white with a long scrawny neck and a fuzzy body my my exclaimed the mother dog when she saw him he certainly doesn't look like any of my other children i wonder how he go to be so funny looking he's ugly quack the other ducklings he doesn't look a bit like us we don't want to play with him and they waddled down to the pond with their mother behind them she shoved them in and jumped in after them after them the all swam beautifully i'll be the big ugly white brother of ours can't swim can't swim exclaimed one of the little yellow ducklings but the ugly duckling had followed them down to the pond and seeing them all swimming he jumped in and swam too at least as well as any of them one my word exclaimed the mother dog he certainly can swim big and ugly as he is he must be my own child and after all is not so very ugly if you like at him right the next day the mother dog decide to let her ducklings see something of the world come along she said 
and I'll introduce you to the animals in the poultry yard across the meadow. Stay close to me now, all of you, so you won't get stepped on. And look out for the cat. When they got to the pole, when they got to the poultry yard, a terrible fight was going on. There, there, said the mother dog. People are always fighting. People are always fighting. But she gave her doglings their first lesson in good manners too. You see the big, haughty looking dog with the red ribbon around her leg? She said, that means she is a very important person. A Spanish grandee, in fact. Now, I want you all to cross the to her politely. They did it nicely too, but the Spanish grandee took one look at the poor ugly duckling and bit him in the neck. You leave him alone, commanded his mother. He may not be as pretty as some, but he has a sweet disposition, and he is the best swimmer of, he lot, of the lot. Besides, he'll look better when he grows up. He won't seem so big and awkward then. But all the creatures in the yard made fun of the ugly duckling just the same. The dogs pushed him and the chickens teased him and the turkeys beat him. Even the girl who fed the poultry kicked him and him very own brothers and sisters were so mean to him that he felt just terrible. One day when he couldn't stand it any longer, he her decided to fly away. He flew over the barnyard fence and on and on, weary and unhappy, until he came to the marsh where the wild ducks lived. When they saw the poor duckling, they said, My, how ugly you are! But we don't really mind as long as you don't marry any of us. You can stay here if you won't go. The poor duckling was very grateful and lay down to get so much needed rest. But at that very moment the shout rang out and two wild geese fell down dead in the marsh. A hunter had shot them and the ugly duckling was frightened almost to death. He bent down and put his head under his wings until the gunshots stopped. When they did, it began to rain, and soon it was pouring. But the duckling didn't care. He had to get away. So he half ran and half flew over many fields and meadows. Tug, he was by the storm. At last, he came to a miserable little shack that seemed to remain, seemed to rain, that seemed to remain standing only because it didn't know which way to tumble down. The door hung open crookedly, and the duckling's split and out of the rain. Inside, he found a woman with a pet cat named Sonny and a pet hen who, because of her little legs, was called Chickabiddy Shortshanks. The ugly duckling fell asleep at once and no one noticed him, but in the morning, the cat purred and then he clucked and the woman said, What's the matter? Her eyesight wasn't very good and she thought, maybe this is a rare prize dog who will lay eggs for me. Can you lay eggs? Then he asked. No, replied the duckling. Can you 
fur and arch your back? Asked the cat. No. Then what can you do? They want to know. I can't swim. Exclaimed the ugly duckling. It's delightful to dive into the water and fill it all and fill it all around you. You must be crazy, say the cat and the hen. And the duckling went, he swam and defied and ran and flew, but everyone gave him the cold shoulder because he was so ugly. At last summer, was over and autumn came with leaves turning brown and whirling in the chilly wind. The dogling was miserable indeed, all alone in the cold cruel world. One of but one evening just as the sun was was setting, he saw coming out of the bushes a log of handsome white swans with long graceful necks. They spread their wings and with a strange cry, rose higher and higher as they flew to warmer regions. The ugly duckling tug, he had never seen such beautiful creatures before. How he admired them, he would have been he would have been happy indeed if they had so much as noticed him. But they did it not. They flew sod, not even seeing the ugly duckling in the freezing lake. And soon it was winter and the lake froze, overholding the duckling fast. What a terrible knock! What a terrible night that was for the furry creature. He almost froze to death. But early the next morning, a farmer passing by broke the ice, lifting the duckling out and took him home. The duckling soon came to himself again as the farmer's children played with him. But he was so frightened at their strange surroundings that he flirted into the milk pan spilling milk all over the place the farmer's wife was annoyed by this and the duckling frightened out of its wits flew first into the butter top and then into the flour barrel what a sight he was the woman strike out at him with the fire tongs while the children laugh and scream and tumble all over each other trying to catch him. Luckily for him, the door was open and he was able to slip out. He lay behind a bush in the snow and stayed there until the winter until the winter was over. But at last it grew warm and sunny. Birds sung and birds swelled. It was spring. All at once, the duckling found he could flap his wings, and one day he found him. And one day he found himself in a beautiful garden. In a beautiful garden, where sweet scent blossoming trees bent down to the water. Suddenly, three glorious white swans. A parrot rubbing their features, they swam lightly across the water. The ugly duckling, dancing at the beautiful birds, talked to himself, If I dare go near them, they will kill me because I am so ugly. But I don't care, better to be killed by this beautiful creature than to be bitten by dogs and hens or kick by the poultry girl or starve in the winter. So he defied into the water and swam out and swam out to the swans. Kill me, 
cried the poor creature, bending his head down to the water. But what was this he saw reflect in the clear water? It was his own image. For the first time, he saw himself as he really was, and to his utter amazement, he saw that he was not an ugly duckling or a duckling at all, but a swan, a beautiful white swan. You see, a bird who comes a swan eggs is a swan, even if the egg happens to be hatched by the duck, by a duck. And duck think that no one is pretty except a duck. They think anyone who doesn't look like a duck is ugly, even the most beautiful swan. But now, the ugly duckling knew why he had felt so much love for the beautiful swans, and he knew he was as beautiful himself as they were. The swans recognized him too as one of them, and they swam around him, stroking him with their beaks. By and by, some children came down to the lake to throw bread crumbs to the swans. Look, cried the youngest, there's a beautiful new white swan, and the older children showed happily, yes, he is the most beautiful one of all. Of course, the swan who had been considered an ugly duckling was very happy, but he never became faint or conceited. he always remembered how it felt to be despised and teased, and he was very sorry for all the creatures who are so treated merrily because they are different from the people around them. But now that he was appreciated at least, he rustled his wings, lifted his slender neck, and sighed happily. To think that this joy should come to one who has always been considered an ugly duckling. It's almost too good to be true.